Hello and welcome to Is This England, a show where we talk about old and new England games and ask just how England was this. Today, we're looking at Euro 2024 qualification and a high stakes friendly against the old enemy, as well as discussing all the latest headlines surrounding the Free Lions. It's back. Football is back. International football is back. And so are we. We have risen with the phoenix of international <laughs> football, haven't we? We always end up coming around when, when it raises its beautiful head and we're here again, aren't we? We're here for that perfect time when we're all just ready, just chewing for a bit of international football. <laughs> I think you're being sarcastic there, but um, I, I definitely would be if I was saying those words up. You know, not to start the podcast on a day, and I'm not the biggest fan of this international break, free games into the Premier League season. When when is the good time for England? There obviously, the, obviously the summer. The yeah. summer is great for England. It, it's that's perfect. But if you're going to have to fit these games in, because there's another international break in like a month, and everyone, yeah. and as soon as everyone remembers that, they just go, "Oh, not another one." <laughs> it's like, yeah. Just give yourself a bit of break from the endless games and have some different games in different shirts that you watch. I suppose so. They've got to cram them in somewhere and I'm, I'm glad it's not my job. I guess that's all I've got to say. It's but, now or it's the awful bit of Four Nations League games in June. Yeah, yeah. But it feels like it's never been away. The Premier League's back. I'm sure we'll touch on some of the stories from that as we progress as they relate to England. But it's important to note that this is our first pod of a tournament year. So come the back end of this season, we'll be ready for the boys, hopefully, fingers crossed, to be travelling to Germany for Euro 2024. Yeah, I guess it's a tournament season, I guess, isn't it? I guess well, we're looking at an, Eng- yeah. an England <laughs> year. Yeah, definitely. This is like this is what we're going to have starting with this. Yeah, but it feels weird because it feels like it would be weird now if England weren't there. They've started well in qualification, which we'll get on to. It's almost like they're just doing like a prison sentence. Yeah, I'm just definitely. like right, look, legally you have to play these games. Like we can't let you go yet. Like by the law, you're gonna have to do this now. <laughs> Almost like we're a host nation. Yeah, yeah, we've just got to go, we've got to go around. Well, Germany basically are. Come on, <laughs> we, we, we just... basically we basically were at Euro 2020, but we didn't have to. I mean, I know, I know that was a complete mess, but we still had to qualify, didn't we? Uh, yeah, I think that was that was just one of the strange things of just like. Just whoever get, buys the most games gets yeah. the most. I mean, I'm really, if this would be taking place now and the bidding would be up for it, there would definitely be three games in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, definitely. For, for Euro when, 2020. It's weird when you think back to that, because that was the idea and it felt like they were quite committed to that concept of let's do a Euro was all over Europe and they've done it once and kind of rolled back from it, but they, they couldn't have tested it out in worse circumstances. For their own idea, they didn't give it a fair crack of the whip. It's yeah, it was a ri- when you look back, it was. I mean, I don't like the idea of just hosting it anywhere because that's just <laughs> that, that's just football. Football yeah. is just in general anywhere that could be anywhere. But what what is great about a a tournament like going in G- to Germany is that it does have a feel to it. Like you will, it will be all the marketing that you'll get a real good idea of. You know, there'll be lots of German phrases that will pop up that will become part of like your your second, um, oh, yeah. second language org, things like that. And I think it is going to be really fun. And, you know, I, I know we've, you know, pie, you know, pie in the sky dreamt of going out there for a couple of days. And I've got yeah. friends that have already talked about it as well. And, you know, no chance of getting tickets or whatever. But even just to be out there for a little while would be perfect because really it's the first tournament in a long time where you feel like, oh, that's doable. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. Age wise, you're not you're not too young. Where it's like, Christ, I'm going to skip myself out for the entire, you know, next eighteen months by spending two days in Germany. You just go and you go you 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 go and hand over to the wallet inspector as well because you're too (laughs) young and you don't know what's going on there too. And and, you know, not the real not real sense of violence you're going to get out there either. And it's also not not too far away where. You've got the over at Qatar. I mean, no chance of ever doing that. Russia, God exactly. no. The Euros, they were everywhere. I can't even remember what was. <laughs> I think that was, was it France the one before that? 
Uh, I think it was. I think that was France. Portugal. Portugal won the tournament. And I seem to recall it being in France because it would have been nice if they won. Probably wrong, though. But anyway, um, to the listeners here, we're back after just looking at how England didn't qualify for a Euros uh, under Steve McLaren. Um, We do have something, not. I'm going to say non-Euros related, although I haven't done much (laughs) deep diving yet. So... (laughs) Before we get into the bulk of this episode, can you give us a little clue as to what's coming up next over the coming weeks on the show? Yeah, yeah. We're obviously, um, we like to try and look at a few themes along the way as we go along. And obviously we've got a big game coming up, which we're going to touch on, uh, which is England v Scotland in the 150th anniversary of Scotland being kind of a thing in terms of in terms of football <laughs> and um and we wanted to try and find something and do a little bit of a, a dive into the history of England and Scotland and and I just as along the way while I was doing it I found just something very strange called the Rouse Cup and that's kind of all I'm going to say at the moment but I think it's going to be a little a little adventure into a very weird tournament that I was totally unaware of if you know you know Rouse Cup wink wink you know, totally. Dan the boozer, you can get in with a <laughs> right crowd if you, if you just do that on entry. <laughs> Let's uh, move forward then. Um, move forward by going ever so slightly backwards from the present day. A lot's happened since we last spoke about current England. Um, England under 21s have lifted a trophy, but we know your thoughts and feelings on the under 21s. I've, 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 li- I've literally been called out for that as well to say, <laughs> Oh, you look a bit stupid, don't you? They, uh, they've gone and won a trophy. It's like, I haven't really got a problem with them. It's just no one cares. Like, <laughs> if, if you'd have told me it was the under 17s, I'd have gone, Okay, fine. Yeah, like, I, that's totally gone from my memory. Couldn't tell you a single, single player who was part of it. <laughs> so, you're doubling down on that. That's fine. Just um, it's fine. I guess the second biggest story, or maybe even the biggest biggest story, especially in your mind, um, the Lionesses lost to Spain in the Women's World Cup final. Obviously, we're a bit late to do any sort of in-depth sort of recap on it. Um, didn't quite manage to break the emergency pod glass. Couldn't couldn't mm. get the, the trophy in the end, which we would have no doubt broken the microphones out for. Uh, the game itself was a 1-0 loss for the Lionesses, uh, thanks to a goal from Olga Carmona. Um, Very broadly, I thought Spain played really well. I was very impressed, and it was very frustrating for England. I'm kind of tempted to go shock jock and say they didn't really turn up. I don't know how true that is. What what are your thoughts? Um, It just felt that it's like when you watch a really good Spain team or like a Guardiola-esque team and they just suffocate you. And as soon as you get the ball, you really want to just get it forward and try and score because you don't know when you're going to get it again. And by doing that, you kind of just play into their hands. You don't take your time with it. You don't build attacks with any kind of meaning. And and yeah, it, it was really disappointing. I, I, I was watching the game and you felt that, I don't know, maybe five women went a bit too early with the subs. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, agree. she'd kind of she kind of tinkered and changed as the tournament went on, and then she found a settled lineup when um when James was um sent off, and then you kind of I thought it was the right move to not start her in that game, but I just felt that the subs early on in the second half it was a bit too. I, I understood James coming on. I thought it was a bit maybe much to make two at once, and England kind of already were in a place where. Yeah, I don't know if what else is going to come from the bench is going to really be able to fix it for us. But it was one of those really incredibly horribly annoying games as well, where every time Spain did have the ball, they were going forward. And also they were very, what English people would not like to see in teams that play England in terms of a lot of rolling around, a lot of pointing at the referee. A lot of times you kind of go, oh, the referee is falling for this. (laughs) Like like they're just being shown a card trick over and over again and just expecting a different outcome. Yeah, we did have the one moment, the the penalty save, which kind of got everyone excited. It felt like it was going to galvanise the team. Unfortunately, it wasn't wasn't enough. But another... um... Another great sort of, you know, it, it's it's going to feel bad for, for them to have lost in the final, but another really uh, good, solid performance beyond that in a tournament to get to the final and something to build on. But let's talk about how yeah. they can maybe build on this because obviously the future um, of the England women's team, especially the manager, is always kind of in the spotlight after a tournament. 
So asked whether defeat made the Lionesses determined to come back stronger at the next World Cup. Uh, Serena Weigman said, four years is a, is a long time. We're in a very short turnaround, but we'll start in September with the Nations League to qualify for the Olympics. How's about that? Nations so League you, qualifying you for the Olympics? Oh, that is so fucking weird, that is, isn't it? You need to go through the Nations League to get into the Olympics. <laughs> so there's no so stop them either. It's like interstellar or something. You've got to go through like a black hole of time to be able to get to the exact same point in the past. It's just really, really weird, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, I guess that's the thing, is it? They, there's always got to be kind of shortish term goals. I guess it's the next Euros after the Olympics, which is going yeah. to be an interesting one with that too. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes on. But I, I think her, you know, Serena's stock is as high as it's ever going to be, really. I mean, the thing of like, has she got to like four finals in a row or something crazy like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, just uh, unfortunately, they couldn't bring the trophy home this time, but there's always the uh, the next one and the one after that and the ones in the vortex in, in space because <laughs> women play just as football, as much football as men, it would appear. Um, anyway. Speaking of Serena Weigman, then, there was a lot of talk prior to the final about Weigman potentially being in the frame for the men's job at some point in the future. So the manager of the England men's team, FA chief executive Mark Bullingham said, I think football is behind other sports in terms of lack of female coaches at the top level. And that has to change. Do I think Serena could do any job in football? Yes, I do. I'm really happy with the job she's doing and I hope she stays doing that job for a long time. If and when we get a vacancy in either of our senior men's or women's manager positions, we would go for the best person for the job, which would be the best person capable of winning matches. Um, Theoretically, do you have, I think we've probably discussed this in the past. Do you have any thoughts? If that were to, the news were to come out tomorrow, what would your reaction be? What if if she was a a candidate for the England men's job, for example? Let's say if she were appointed or very likely to be appointed. Uh, I'd have absolutely no problem with it at all. I think it's the I think more to the not for the point of what she's done. She's clearly got a track record, which is like no one no one else is. And I think I thought saw something a while ago that some of her achievements she has done. Literally, no man or woman in the history of football has done the things that she's done. Yeah. So it's so it's kind of it's an amazing career she's got for herself does she want the arse with it if i'm if i'm honest i mean oh, no. already she's got she's already been scrutinized for, in, for getting england to a world cup final and winning a euros with england yeah kind of that and you know there's been scrutiny there but on top of that comes even more with the men's job and so many idiots and a thing that I don't think the FA are ready for in terms of of that. That again, they've got the nicest, most successful England manager kind of in human living memory in charge at the moment, and people are still angry. Yeah. So if you're going to put a bloody woman in charge, you know, it's just like for God's sakes, like clearly, like I mean, I think you've got a list of like potentially some of the candidates who could who, oh. were, who were allegedly going to look at the for the we'll job get there. I just yeah. have a quick point on 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 potentially uh, Weidman, you know. What I thought was that we, you can't pretend, like just saying, look, we're going to look for the best person for their job. You can't pretend mm. it it wouldn't be a big deal to have a woman managing a totally men's would, team. Yeah. It would be, it'd just be a, a big news story. Let's say I'm not saying it's good or bad or what have you, although I would say it's good. But anyway, yeah. I think following on from Gareth Southgate and the squad and the mentality and the kind of vibe he's brought to the England squad, he's basically combined and sort of helped nurture this group of really nice, young, polite lads who who do genuinely, to a man pretty much, seem to be really like positive and nice. So Mm. that would be a good environment for her to step into. It's not like she'd be taking over, say, Man United, uh, when they had Ronaldo there about eighteen months ago, yeah. and it was like, my God, everyone just hates each other. Like, or like, or like the Netherlands or France during one of their years where they all hate each other at a tournament yeah. and all go out in a group stage, and yeah. So I, I could, I could see it happening, but like I said, like you were kind of alluding to there, do I see the FA making the right decision and 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 treating and I don't know, being sensitive to the issues around it, probably not, and I can't imagine but, them but ever also, going if you, for it. If you, if you were taking kind of any any form of 
of, of her being a woman out of it. She's kind of exactly what they want. They want someone yeah. who's tactically very smart. They want someone who's won things in the past, who's going to be able to come into an already good culture and then kind of take England to that next level. Yeah. Kind of if she was a male manager, clearly she would be the she just would be the next person in charge. But, yeah. because, but because there is that transition, and I don't particularly know if she has managed a male side before. Unfortunately, even with the nicest of boys that we think that England have got, there is still a form of someone else is coming in here and they don't know because they don't know our game and all this other nonsense. And I think it's probably a headache that uh, England, England as a country, aren't ready for. And I don't, th- I don't know. The media definitely aren't ready for it. I can tell you that. And and really it's going to have to be a man who takes that next job. But I would say that there isn't a man out there who has a CV of equal measure to hers. Well, can I shock you by saying that the <laughs> FA the FA are doing their work anyway? So according to, I'll say reports this week, they're from very bad sources across the board. I think mm. it was mainly a Daily Mail guess article, you know, and it's just like, I thought it was so like from, so... from from goalshoot.com, just those that, websites that you've got no idea that they existed until they start saying absolute shite. It's notable that, you know, Daily Mail is probably the most reputable. So, I mean, it's the original source for the story, but it's it's yeah. all on Give Me Sport, Soccer Mad, yeah. I Love Footy.com. Get but, the goal in there. But also, also Sky Sports as well. But um, yeah, so this week has been a bit of a chaotic uh, shortlist kind of rumoured. So essentially, the FA are. Uh, this is all allegedly, as I think I may have already said, but yeah. they're anticipating that Gareth Southgate will walk after Euro twenty twenty four. I thought he'd already confirmed this. I thought no, that was like a given. I don't think I don't think it's out there, but I, I I I think we've said before. Like I think it's just best in absolutely everybody's interest if he were to leave after this because a he doesn't need the shit anymore of just being. The reason that England haven't won stuff because they've clearly won so much stuff before him and and all that, but also <laughs> even with the best will in the world, even with us being the ultimate Southgate fans, he's had his time, he's had yeah. his chances now, and I don't think there's any shame in that. And it's time for him to just kind of go. I've had my chances. I've done as best as I physically can. It's time for someone else with some different ideas to come in and try and do something, which I think is fair for everyone. So the FA would agree if reports are to be believed that I've started drawing up a shortlist. Four names that, that kind of stand out on that shortlist. You're going to love this, Nick. <laughs> um, Eddie Howe, currently employed by Newcastle. Uh, Graham Potter, currently not employed. And I think somebody that we've given a shout as being probably the best, the most likely to uh, mm. to take over. We can, we can touch on that a bit more, maybe. Uh, Mauricio Pochettino, who's been at Chelsea for... Three games now? For three minutes. It's three minutes. <laughs> and the outstanding candidate um, in terms of the FA and the man they want to see take over the role is Pep Guardiola. Now, what <laughs> what do you make of this? Uh, I, will, I will go out on a limb and call it absolute nonsense and I'll go one further and say, why, why are they thinking about this if they are thinking about this don't spend any time thinking about pep guardiola <laughs> get him out of your head they don't, should have, just don't bother they should have been planning for safegate to go since before year of 2020 and mm. like kind of had an idea as to who they wanted to be well maybe I there think. was a list back back then but it was one of the well i think it would maybe it would have been a bit a list back then and they've always had this idea but because it's becoming it's coming up to that ultimate no return, you know, good, bad, indifferent, it's going to end. So mm. I guess before it was very results driven. Now it doesn't matter if, if England won the tournament, Southgate will go. If England come really, you know, group stage exit, he's going to go and all yeah. in between as well. So I guess yeah. they would have had an idea, but this is kind of the end game of, right, we've got a time, we know it's going to end. And like you say, there's no point in having Guardiola on this list, you are kidding yourself <laughs> if you think that he's going to rock up and do an England job. Oh, no, because he is the kind of sicko who is only going to do every day on the on the training ground club kind of work, isn't he? It's just yeah, not yeah. going to happen. I'm sure I'm sure at some point in his career he'll want to manage Spain. But I mean, yeah, come but on, he'll, he'll do he'll do something mental like he'll change all of like no, he'll he'll want to ma- manage Catalonia. 
Yeah. And he'll like and he'll change their entire fixture list. So like every week there is a different like under 12s game that he manages. <laughs> And Absolutely. It's be like, and he'll have like a 12 year old starter in like the full men's team and he'll do the women's team as well and and all that. And like I say, Guardiola is not going to start being a, a, you know, an actual candidate for England. It's kind of like when um, Mourinho was like really well thought of at the FA all those years ago. And they were like, we could have got Mourinho actually. And I was yeah, like, you well, can... you got fucking McLaren. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, you can think, you can think well of people, but that doesn't mean like, they're going to work for you if you want them to. It's just craziness. My my main reasoning for, I guess, well, one, it's a stupid story that we can talk about for a little yeah. bit, but I kind of fear that the genie's out the bottle now. And because that story has been, because it's international break and it gets so much traction, particularly on social media, we, we, we're going into a tournament and people are already going to be going, we could have, we could have had Guardiola for this tournament. We could <laughs> yeah. have had Pochettino. Well, no one's going to care about any of the others. They just want Guardiola. I, I, but... I, th- I think if someone, if if, we, if we're anywhere and someone goes, but yeah, we could have had Guardiola here. We have the legal right to go, right, let me stop you there. No, yeah, that could not have happened. Okay, get over yourself. Get over that. Because it's nonsense. It's just going to ramp up, though. It, even if it's not Guardiola, it'll be whoever. And uh, by the time of the tournament, I've got, it's going to be, it's going to be overshadowing, I think. I mean, just just you know, speculating. I think Maybe, whatever yeah. talk of the manager and potential successor could overshadow the tournament, and um, and we can't really afford that. And Gareth Southgate doesn't deserve that. And the FA should have maybe tried to take some steps to address that, knowing that he's going to go. You but know, what would you, what would you have had? Would you have had, for example, Potter? Would you have Potter now and say, right? We want you to be the manager once Southgate leaves, which is going to be this time. Do you want that Glenn Hoddle kind of thing of turning up to training with Terry Venables as manager again, and Terry Venables having to ban him from training because he kept turning up? It doesn't have to be that way. I would, I would rather, <laughs> but I'd rather, it will be. It's I'd, England. <laughs> I'd rather them have a conversation with Potter rather than having him on some list, some fake list that's leaked to the Daily Mail mm. by some member of staff at the FA. And say, you know, if if that's the guy, have a conversation with him. If if they end up appointing someone, maybe say there'll be a meeting with the squad, and you get to, you know, have a few words. But after that, there's no, you, you're not, you're I not speaking during this tournament. You, it can be handled in a way. What I fear is that it's going to be rushed, and people are going to be pissed off at the next manager mm. before they even get appointed because it's not going to be Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. But I would like to, th- I'd like to think that sensible people know it's not going to be Pep Guardiola. And you can just kind of go right. Well, I, th- I, I mean, after that, after that list, you're probably saying it's Potter. I mean, Pochettino will probably be sacked by then, so there's every chance he could come in. But again, is he? He'll be bad by then in the eyes of the public, yeah. though, won't he? Couldn't yeah, even Chelsea, like... and he spent a billion. Yeah, and again, I guess with Graham Potter, well, see, see Pochettino for what I meant there. But I guess yeah. with Potter, at least, at least you kind of hear about him being the training ground guy, and no one could have done well at Chelsea. Hence, you know. Pochettino's going in there now and not having the best start. And I don't think anybody can do good at Chelsea for this period for now, <laughs> but you've got Graham Potter there. I think it's probably a better shout. I mean, Eddie Howe's too busy learning about Saudi Arabia, apparently. Yeah. And it's It'll just be... like, that's not going to happen. Is it even if he gets sacked? Like, I I think it's having got he's still not got as good of a sign. Yeah. yeah. He has, but it's kind of like, oh, with I know they'll say, oh, people, ha- yeah, they actually haven't spent that, that much money. They have. They have. Yeah. And and you kind of go, well, yeah, he did amazing to do that. Don't get me wrong, but it's very different when you've got to play week in, week out and do something different where Potter, you do feel like there's more behind his teams than with Harry, which were yeah. quite simplistic football, every now and then keep it tight at the back and waste a lot of time. England fans would hate it with Eddie Howe there, wasting think, that time. I think with Eddie Howe, it would be a case of, say he, he is out of a job at Newcastle by the end of the season, Having got them to the Champions League, he'll want one, one more crack of trying to do that in the Prem with, I don't know, whoever it may be. And that yeah. will fail miserably because they won't spend as much money as Newcastle. And then he'll be in the frame to replace Graham Potter as the England manager unless yeah. Pep fancies it at that point. Either yeah. way, whatever may lie ahead in the future, um, our reigning king, Sir Gareth, King Gareth, can we start? Well, we can't start calling him King Gareth just yet. <laughs> it's let's too see, late. Let's see how he gets on against Scotland. But he's picked his <laughs> squad for the upcoming games against the Ukraine and Scotland. Um, 
Some of the headlines, really, um, Jack Grealish and Trent Alexander-Arnold have both dropped out of the squad. Uh, there's no further call-ups planned to replace them, which is is fine in terms of still having a competitive squad. Just looking at them individually, uh, Trent was... I think he was masquerading as a number 10 the last time we saw England and and by all accounts doing quite well. Did he score a goal, get an assist or uh, he was wearing yeah, the number he, 10 shirt, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, he was playing in the midfield for last for England last time. Um, his defensive game isn't good, but his offensive game is very good going forward, which is exactly what's happened with his game at Liverpool this season. It will just always be an issue until he solves it. it I will, don't know if he yeah. wants to solve it. No, but and it seems like that, that's if, fine if he's going to play this role for England because they've got a million right backs and lack creativity in central midfield. So yeah, yeah I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a big problem. I, it's getting more common though with the, the dropout from Alexander Arnold. It's getting a bit. Ryan Giggs can't be bothered to go to Wales friendlies. Yeah, and well, I, I think I think the still, he's still only got twelve caps or something. I think the strange thing with Liverpool and that midfield experiment is, is it worked well and then they've stopped and spent a shitload of money on midfielders, which is fair enough because I'm not sure how much you could rely on him in there. But yeah, if that's England's attempt to get him in and then he's back playing at right back for Liverpool and to be honest, not really looking great in that position again. Um, I know Liverpool fans will kill me for, for saying that, but like I know I know what he brings offensively and it we've is all seen very him special we've all, we've all seen him enough we all know how he plays we all know he's not very good defensively because he doesn't work hard and he doesn't like tackling and he doesn't like going backwards but he's incredible going forward so there's both things can be true it's not like saying we're saying that he's absolutely shit it's just the fact of he's just not Liverpool find a way to work around it. I don't think England can afford to have a system that just works exactly like that for, for them. So if he's going to play for England, it's going to be in midfield where they need him. I think it's going to be now until the tournament, if he decides to play for England, can they get him to play in those in there? And can they build a bit of a team around him? Because if you play in, mid, in midfield, you'll have Bellingham there as well. And you'd imagine Declan Rice. That's a lot of work for Declan Rice to do. Yeah. Um, Jack Grealish as well. I mean, I imagine that both Jack and Trent will at least be in the next squad if if they're fit, whether you know whether they actually see it through or not, we'll see. But um interesting one with Jack really. Is, is 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 Grealish still drunk? I don't feel like I've seen him this season. Um no, I've I've seen him. He's been knocking about a bit, yeah. I think looking good by all accounts, really. Um, well, I mean, that's not I mean looking good. I mean, do we mean just <laughs> in, in a football in general sense. or in a footballing sense? I, I mean the, fine. The, the other gen, you know, the general is is a given, really. But um yeah, he's kind of in apart from right back, he's in the position where there's surely like kind of strongest competition. I don't think he's got that yeah. place nailed down. No. So it's interesting to to think he's not made this well, he's had to drop out of this squad for whatever reason. It's gonna be such an interesting battle to see who kind of starts and left when we get to tournament time. Um, some yeah. of the other headlines, starting with the defense, is the inclusion of Harry Maguire. I kind of think mainly due to injuries. He must be I think pushing... it's, in, it's injuries, and there's just nobody else around at the moment who's barely even played a game for England. Yeah, and I, I know mean, that, that I know the plane is you know it's Ukraine away, which isn't the easiest game in the world you've ever played. But you've got you know Levi Colwell and Lewis Dunk, who are, I don't think either of them have played for England yet. No, you've got Tamori who's come back as well, and you've got Mark Gay as well, who's I think has been called up too. So if you took Maguire out of that, that is probably Stones is injured, obviously six caps between them, and most of them are for Gray, right? Or, yeah, or all yeah. of them. Yeah, uh, pretty pretty much. Yeah, so you kind of go, well, yeah, makes sense. Even though he's not playing much at the moment, who else are you really going to call? Because say Stones isn't around at the moment. Tyron Mings is out for the season. You know, Dyer's not even getting in the in the Spurs squad at the moment. Shit, he, he's kind <laughs> of just like that person of just like, yeah, he's the last man standing, really, with that. And again, he always plays well for England. So it's yeah. not really going to be a problem straight away. No, I think he. he... He'll be pushing it. He can't carry on the way he is. If say if Colwell has a great breakout year for Chelsea and Dunk continues to to impress as he has done for Brighton, it's going to take a lot to take Maguire. But you know that call up has been kind. I guess over exaggerated the importance of it. Um, I could definitely see Maguire just getting a loan for six months come January. Yeah, just to just to, to, to like a, to like an Everton, just to yeah. be like 
get you just get me playing for six months in the build up. He and Connor Stones, Cody yeah, just yeah, six months again playing together, and I think he, yeah, he'll be he'll be there at the tournament probably, even if he's just playing games because he's just been there and done it for England. And again, like we said with a lot of these players, which I'll probably come on to a little bit now, it's the last ride for a lot of these players too. I think that when Southgate goes, a lot of them will go as well with him. So. Are we talking about Jordan Henderson here? Because we're talking about Jordan Henderson. I was going to say two players really in that midfield who, for different reasons, aren't going to be going out on the loan to get prem time. Is Jordan Henderson, who's as you say, potentially the last ride, and Calvin Phillips, who's still relatively near the beginning or most the middle of his England career. Calvin Phillips, I think, has said he's perfectly happy being at Manchester City. I mean, not he's, playing. That, he's, he's, he's not playing and he and he hasn't been. Jordan Henderson is playing, but to what standard? Um, yeah, <laughs> to what point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when he's playing, not playing. Um, yeah. But it's a difficult one. I just think Henderson's in there mainly for Safegate to just go, mate, I've, you know, I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with, really. You keep, mm. You're going to keep playing in Saudi Arabia if these other boys in training kind of, if he can show them up in training, the midfield, all this abundance of midfielders that we've got, then he might actually keep him. But I think it's just the start of a little bit of a gentle release of of, of Henderson. You'd, you'd think so, isn't it? And I guess the problem, the thing I'm always going to keep saying with these these England teams is who are these other young players that are coming in to take their place? Because if you look at that, then it's you're looking at Phillips who's just not playing. Yeah. Then you kind of go well. It feels wrong that England haven't got a player there somewhere to come in and replace him. You look the same with Henderson as well. I know we've kind of talked about Alexander Arnold, but then you've got Conor Gallagher, who's fine. I'd and say then... Henderson's fine though as well. Yeah, but again, the two, I'd the, the, probably the... rather go for the younger one who's playing in the Premier League. I mean, and I, and I get, and I guess that's the thing, isn't it? You want more of the players who are playing in the Premier League who are younger. I mean, yeah, he started pretty much every game for Chelsea this season. Gallagher has. But yeah. I just don't think he's. I just don't think he's a fun pick. No, he's not. You know a fun what I mean, pick. it's just not interesting. We might have the strength in depth there, but Christ, Bellingham and Rice as a midfield too. Whether whether he wants to play Bellingham in that too, or not, is 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 you know a decision. But um, that's as good as any midfield too in the world for for my money. You know, Bellingham and Rice. Yeah, I just yeah. don't think they're going to be able to play in that midfield too. Is my is is my worry, especially then you're you're asking Rice to. Uh, you're asking Bellingham to do something that really he's not as good at. Is Bellingham our number ten then? I think he's going to end up playing there because I think, I think it's. So. I think it's, and I say this in the nicest way. It's kind of the safe bet of that insurance of having him in there and yeah. having a ten that can just go forward. Because I mean, you look at the under twenty ones when they won that tournament that I don't really care about. I mean, you've got James Garner in there at Everton, Curtis Jones at Liverpool, who again in my head is about twenty six. Yeah. Uh, Emil Smith Rowe, who's rotting at Arsenal. Yeah. Gordon, who plays wide at Newcastle now. Angel Gomez, again, I forgot he was uh, he was about that age as well. He's at Lille and is a wide player. Cole Palmer, who's now just moved to Chelsea, again another wide player. Morgan Gibbs White, who is playing great at Forest, but in a very specific forward role. Yeah, there's no holders in there, and no. that's kind of like a big gap. Where you're going, who the hell? Is-? I mean, Oliver Skip. No, <laughs> no, no, to, no, offense to Oliver, no offense ends. to Oliver Skip. At <laughs> if he gets a game for England, that's it. We, we just give a it big all game. In. I could handle a call up for him. He's probably already got one. But Croy, yeah, you just probably just do go back to Calvin Phillips. But anyway, on on the on the you know, let's talk fun. Can we quickly mm. touch on um, the new greatest player in the world officially, Jude Bellingham's time at Real Madrid oh. thus far, absolutely smashing it in every single game winning over the fans like nobody else ever has and just being a general superstar. In my head, I have already seen videos of him. You know, those when you see like in Serie A, you see like Milan winning the title yeah. and Zlatan comes out in that four, like 4K yeah, thing yeah. it's all like blurry in the background, but he is like pristine. I feel like I've already seen one of those of Jude Bellingham, but he's smoking a cigar. Oh. And I know that's not that's not what's happened, but in my <laughs> head, like that's what's been made up because his start has been that good. And it's like that stadium of Madrid's now. Look, I've been to the old one and it was it was amazing to be in, but that stadium now looks proper fucking 
brilliant and yeah. a destination for anybody who wants to go and watch football. And that's his now. He is already the best player at Real Madrid. Fuck. And, and, and kind of, if you look now, like a year ago, we were genuinely having conversations of like, does he get in the England team? Yeah. Yeah, it, it became apparent that it would have to be just a, kind of ahead of the World Cup. But yeah, I agree. And uh, it's it's amazing to see. And I love the way he kind of handles the... the and he, let's not forget, he's already put in a great tournament for England anyway. For England, yeah, exactly. In a different position to what he'll likely end up playing. I was even reading the other day, Real Madrid may have to play him as a striker for a bit because of um, injuries. And you can't imagine him having a bad time there. I'll just do that. It's fine. No, don't don't worry about it. Be glad. <laughs> just keen. I mean, some of his goals have been tappings as well, like you know, proper poacher goals. But yeah, that's 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 absolutely incredible from Jude there. Before we get into maybe a bit of what that might mean for England speculatively, I was just doing a bit of googling, and apparently, um, this is a game from bad sources such as like the Mirror and things like that. Thomas Tuchel is um, annoying the Chiefs at Bayern Munich because... No, really? <laughs> <laughs> because despite all of the money they've spent on players such as Harry Kane and predominantly Harry Kane for him, he really wanted a defensive midfielder and we wanted he wanted them to try and get Declan Rice. Um, they also tried for Polina and that yep. fell through. Um, and yeah, apparently he just keeps moaning at them about that. And um, he made a comment about Harry Kane's doing okay, but... He's not really getting the service because we're not set up defensively due to the lack of the defensive midfielder. So could it all go to fucking shit because Thomas Tuchel's a nut? Will he be benching Kane as a statement? No, I think it's more a point of uh, Bayern. He's just going to be that cog in the machine at Bayern. And really, does it matter who the Bayern manager is? I mean, he's, um, it's no. Harry Kane. He's going to end up playing because he's Harry Kane. It's He will be absolutely fine there, won't he? And in fairness to Bayern, they tried to sign Polinia, but Tony Khan was very busy at that point dealing with, <laughs> with that, selling fucking Mitrovic, trying to sack CM Punk. You know, he was doing a lot of stuff around that time. So, and filling kind of, the, yeah, the I mean, honestly, stadium. I honestly genuinely don't think that that like the Pliny thing even was like the top four things that happened to him that day. It was just like not even looking over from the camera, like right, he's going fucking nowhere. Anyway, carry on. Like, <laughs> the fact that he still is run, he is like the what is he um, director of football at Fulham is just yeah. still incredibly funny to me. I just can't help it. But yeah, they. I think Kane he started off very well. Um, he's wearing a lovely kind of away kit of Bayern's which I made his debut in which I thought was delightful and Love I think he's just going to be there and great and he's going to be just scoring goals there and it's going to feel a bit more special when we do see him for England now because he's just been there like a presence like a gas for so long yeah you kind of just take him for granted because we always see him for Spurs and he does well for Spurs and there's already a slight rhetoric of oh guess what he's been holding Spurs back <laughs> Yeah, which is not. It's like, are course. you fucking stupid? <laughs> they do look good without him, though. Um, maybe um, somebody who we haven't mentioned so far, maybe James Madison can be thanked for that. He might be starting to creep towards starter territory. But I mean, if, how are we going to fit him but in? Where? But where? That's, ask, that's, um, that, that's who was the it? eternal problem. Who was it who said it's his number 10 shirt now? <laughs> and we laughed at him. Was it Chris Sutton? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It was Chris Sutton. He's, he started a game and he was fine. And he was like, it's his shirt to lose now. <laughs> He's doing well. He's doing well. Bless him. Yeah. But yeah, Harry Kane's German. Look forward to seeing him, um, you know, play for England again. Harry Kahn. There we go. Hey. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I guess the surprising ones. That, I mean, you've got Callum Wilson, Saka, Rashford, Foden. Uh, the other two forwards in the squad are Eberichi Eze and Eddie and Ketia. Um, Eze called up before and I think played just a little bit off the bench. Mm -hmm. And Ketia, no called up before, has randomly started starting for Arsenal after nearly leaving last year. I mean, I know Jesus has been injured, but it's a weird one. Arsenal's tactic is to be mental, isn't it? This year, it's like, what yeah. am I doing? Don't look. What's the? Don't look at my left hand. What's going on with the right? <laughs> I just don't know what. Yeah, they're doing well, and he's doing well. Um, yeah, but... it's 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 good that he's been called up, isn't it? Because it's like it's that eternal thing of now. Look, we know Wilson is going to do what he'll do. I think you know Ollie Watkins. I think the only reason he's not in the squad is just to see what Eddie and Ketia is up to and what he could be like if an injury crisis happens for England. I think if the tournament was tomorrow, you would take Watkins, Wilson, 
and Kane, I would probably say. But I guess the yeah. problem is, are you going to take three strikers? Is Wilson the best out of those? I don't think so. I would probably say Ollie Watkins is a better all-round player and maybe a, a similar-ish to Kane with his good hold-up play. Not that Wilson isn't good, but you've got the creeping presence of Ivan Tony in, in a couple of months as well. Is yeah. this really the best chance you'll get to look at Inketia and most likely? Yeah, exactly. It's a squad with a, a bit of long-term thinking, I guess. Not as controversial as some people make out. Every time the squad comes out, it's like, oh my God, why is Harry Maguire there? Why is Jordan Henderson there? Don't get me wrong, I'd love us to have uh, flipping much better names in there, but unfortunately, they aren't English. Yeah, you know? exactly. And all oh, oh, they're far too old, you know? Yeah. Ba- yeah exactly. Batty cannot play anymore. All right. <laughs> Paul Ince, he's got enough on. That's the uh, that's the squad. Let's have a look at the games then. Uh, England versus Ukraine. Uh, England continue their Euro qualification campaign on Saturday with a, an away matchup against the Ukraine. I think he's being played in Poland. Uh, Ukraine are second in the qualification group on six points compared to England's 12. Ukraine do have a game in hand for that. So England have made a perfect start. Four wins with a positive goal difference of 14. Um, are there any factors at play here that could maybe cause an upset? I'm primarily think, thinking from the point of view of England maybe shooting themselves in the foot. Feels like a while since we've had a really shit England night, excluding like going out you know, in the World Cup, which is a bad night. World Cup exit, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's not like the type of bad night I mean. You know, yeah. just like, how have we done this to us? This is just like the old England here. Yeah, I think it's harder for England to do that because there is just such a depth of good players now, isn't it? They just stockpile so many good ones. And you'd expect England to go to to go to Poland to beat Ukraine and, and to get something. So you'd, you'd kind of expect that. Even if it's a draw, it's not the end of the world because England are quite quite far ahead. I think Italy are an are interesting one who England play in the next round of, of fixtures to kind of cap off the year. Um, um, I think they um, obviously Mancini's left and he's gone to Saudi Arabia. So that's another one. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah, man, so Mancini's gone research. to manage the Saudi Arabian national team and he's been replaced. Jesus. Yeah, so Mancini replaced by Luciano Spalletti. So an interesting one when England do get there, but they're in a bit of a state at the moment as well. They never seem to be. Yeah, they're on, on the, the same amount of uh, points as North Macedonia at this stage. Ah, with a game in pathetic. hand. But, 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 um, if they cannot qualify directly, they will advance to the playoffs thanks to the Nations League. I mean, it's pathetic, really, the qualification for this, isn't it? Because it's to the top two qualify... And then there's a Nations League thing that's involved as well. It's just like, fuck, you know, it's, it is actually impossible if you're a half-decent team to qualify for the Euros, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, um, I think as we, you know, after the Ukraine, we'll be halfway there. And if it's five wins out of five, we could, we could, we must be like one or two wins more away from confirming qualification one way or another. Um, yeah. Don't want to count our chickens, but can you imagine some of the squads if... Uh, you know, you'll be getting your under twenty ones. If we got three games to spare, you'll be getting Curtis Curtis Jones in there and Oliver Skip. And the thing is, though, with Gary Thurkett, I don't think we would. I think nah, we would. No, we are having the same missionary team that are going out there every <laughs> single week, and they will play. They will play no matter what. My Jordan will play, despite the uh, the the stakes um, being, you know, technically higher in the England versus Ukraine game. Do the stakes actually get much higher? than the friendly on Tuesday against Scotland. It's a commemorative friendly to mark the 150th anniversary of the first meeting between the two sides when football was invented. Essentially, yeah. It, it was when football, it was when international football was invented between these two. I think this is a thoroughly interesting, interesting. game that I, well, I really want to watch because I just feel like there's going to be such... I want to say ceremony, but I'm but with the other word in my head is hatred that's going to come from Hamden because it yeah. feels like it feels like since the Euros when there was that draw between the sides and it, oh, you know, most of Scotland came to England for that game, and then kind of the, I remember when we were in the pub watching it and there was a lot of chance of like the, the chance of starting of Scotland get battered everywhere they go, yeah. and that started like seeping into like regular life, and right. I, I almost want to say it's been at like cricket games I've been to as well, and I just think. What you've got better things to sing about and do, and let's not even get on to 
fucking some of the awful stuff that England fans were chatting in the past. But I get if that's a sanitised version, but is there anything else? Because Scotland are intermittently good these days, really, aren't they? Let's have a look, a brief look at Scotland then. They're currently managed by Steve Clark, former best boy of Jose Mourinho. And like you say, they're coming into this game on red hot form. Actually, eight games unbeaten it is. Uh, this run includes a famous win over Spain in the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Scotland are actually top of that group. Um, Georgia are second, uh, nor- followed by Norway, then Spain, then Cyprus. Uh, so they wow. faced Cyprus <laughs> at the weekend before playing England. So they could really be stretching that lead at the top of the table. I mean, Christ, if Spain don't get out of that group, you, you know that they will, as you say earlier. Even the pathetic Euro qualification, if, if you can't qualify, if Spain finish behind Georgia and Norway, I mean, there's got to be some... They they had to have recently won the Nations League or something mental, haven't they? I sp- yeah, you're probably right, actually. I don't know how quickly I can check that, but I might have a no. look. Um, the uh, last time we played Scotland, as you say, it was the nil-nil in the Euro 2020 group stage. But since then, they've really gone on. Well, not since then, but the last eight games have really gone on to greater things. Not since then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not the whole, it's not the whole story. Yeah. Um, some some players and stories of note, I guess, uh, Scott McTominay has been banging in the goals uh, recently for Scotland. Not, not, not so much recently at club level because he's not really playing, but... I think were they playing him as a striker, or did did he just keep getting into those positions for Scotland? I, I think he kind of plays not as a striker, but at least a bit of a forward role for them, which I think is where he's better going forward in his game. Anyway, he's much more of a box to box player than a sitting player, and I think maybe they're just starting to get the best out of him. I mean, there were talk about you know obviously West Ham wanted him, but they um, they went another way. You know, rumours of Bayern Munich wanting him. Yeah, again, when you kind of go. Too have short you him? Yeah, again, too short weirdo. But it's kind of like, have you watched him as a holding player, which is a kind of what you want? It's not really that. He's just, I mean, he'll bang two goals after I say this now, but I just think he's just tall and, and they just love yeah. having somebody <laughs> tall in, in the squad. Um, yeah, weird one. He'll be up for it. I'm sure the whole team will be up for yeah. it. But somebody who isn't up for it. Um, sorry to doubt your sort of up for itness. Um Elliot Anderson, but there you go. He's left the squad due to injury, although there are rumours he could be switching his allegiance to England. Uh, Newcastle player and on my bench in FPL, one of my... Uh, he's been there since the start for me because he was cheap and had high, high ownership, and I think he's got me one or two points. Doing well um, recently, haven't you? He's <laughs> oh, 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 that hurts. <laughs> for the for the listener, uh, we're in a head to head league together, and Nick Nick beat me at the weekend, and I'd forgotten all about it until you just snuck. First, I mentioned it. Don't worry, just uh, just doing it in a non public domain. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, again, I'm sorry for all we're in we're in kind of silly season, I guess. International, um, not that much to talk about other than some mildly interesting call ups, but there have been rumours that. He could be looking to switch his allegiance to England. He has history for this. So he represented Scotland at youth level before turning to the free lines at under 19 level. He then went back to Scotland at under 21 level. And they were on about, before he gets a cap for Scotland, he's leaving a squad for a game against England to potentially become English. <laughs> I mean, have you seen him? He looks very Scottish. Snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. I mean, what are you, what are you doing here, Anderson? I mean... Pick, just pick it. Clearly, uh, uh, you know, all the best luck in the world to him. He's not going to play much for England, is he? No, he's he's really not. He's really not. But yeah, there we go. Um, let's hope for a, a nice, clean fight, shall we, on Tuesday? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be great. Like I say, like the noise that's going to come from Hamden. Again, it's kind of for the celebration. Yeah. And I think from memory, the 100th celebration of the, F- of the Scottish FA took place and there was a game at Hampden Park as well, and it finished 5 0 to England. <laughs> on the, well, I, was, like, I think it was like Bobby Moore's like last game, but like one of his last games ever for England. He may have even scored. I was going to say, I'm glad that it's at Hampden Park. I feel like I'd rather not see England at Wembley over these two games just to have something a bit different. Oh, yeah, definitely. The FA do not be needing more money in from England. <laughs> Although I, I, I don't know why, but I get emails every now and then. It's like, quickly get your tickets for North Macedonia at home. I'm just like, quickly. sod off. As much <laughs> as I want to go to an England game, I'm not going all the way down to that London for this. 
The last thing, I guess, really to say, and it's not even on that, it's just going back a little. Spain, same as Italy, if they cannot qualify directly, uh, they will advance to the playoffs via the Nations League. Oh, there you go. Which is the... <laughs> is, it, is, anybody, has anybody checked that? I feel like that's a lie. In this is on Wikipedia. Like Spain, so Spain could... are going like, yeah, if we don't get through that, we won the Nations League, we, we qualified through that, remember, and everyone you know, doesn't bother checking. This is so weird. Like, this is all on Wikipedia, but I'm looking at the other teams who who have got that next to them. Portugal. Scotland. Georgia. Spain. Greece. Italy. Turkey, Croatia, uh, Serbia, Kazakhstan, and Israel. Oh, there's more. Bosnia. Is it because they went? They were all promoted in their league. I'm assuming. Let's just let's just move past it. It's not. It's not our group. Our group's fine. We're That's not our there. problem. We haven't got to worry about that absolute fucking landfill of a mess over there. That is nothing to do with us. <laughs> we're sailing so... through. So uh, we've, we've sailed right on through to the end, really. Uh, the only thing to say, really, what's kind of next for England? Um, obviously, you'll hear our voices again in, as we assess and analyse the Rails Cup. So look forward to that. But next time we co- sort of talk in current England, maybe um, ahead of the game. I doubt there's going to be much to review, by the way, of the, these. We can maybe sneak if a bit into the Rails Cup episode. Mm-hmm barnstormer of yeah. like of like a scotland game the only yeah. chance you'll hear our voices again about this time of england is if there's a really fun fucking game in that scotland one because elsewise it doesn't seem like there's going to be much but like you say we've got uh friendlies coming up pretty soon in october uh one uh sorry one friendly against australia which i have kind of got an idea of a game i'd love for us to do around yeah. australia as well and finishing the campaign with england at wembley against italy yeah, I don't. That, that's not really finishing the campaign. It's just finishing that kind of. It's a more after that. Of, fuck yeah, that's yeah. only that's the halfway state. No, that's no. six six eight of ten group games. I think for us. Who? Um, I, I literally don't even know who else is in England's group past fucking whoever this is. It, it feels like it's just Italy and Ukraine. <laughs> I feel like that's it. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. Oh, God, it's so flipping hot. We just need to call this. <laughs> oh, beyond that, I just want to make a joke, everybody. I just want to make a joke. After that, we can look forward to the crowning of Pep Guardiola as England manager because that has just been confirmed. <laughs> Breaking news <laughs> on the podcast, exclusive from George, Guardiola joins England. Yeah, it's not. It's Mo- not. Mocked up in one of those awful Fabrizio Romano yeah. photo shops where he's just got like the england shirt on already just over a yeah. awful like filtered photo of his head and his head's far too shiny yeah pep to england here we go <laughs> christ thank you very much nick nick come on england thank you mate Did you see There's no danger With all that we've been